Hi and welcome back to the third episode of Stage in the Text, the Analyzing Process. We have now been looking at two different texts before. First of all, uh, a text, Hotel California, and then we have been going through uh, like a tale about a monkey and a tortoise. And today we will have a look at the pelican. It's written by August Strindberg. He is a dramatist. He was a dramatist. It is uh, about four pages from a chamber play and involves, in this case, two characters in dialogue. This text is also the base for the next film, Staging the Text Rehearsal Techniques, where we will show, with the help of actors, how you start and proceed the rehearsing process. In this episode we will learn how to use intuitive analysis. We will also learn how to divide the script in sequences and add headlines for every sequence. This is an essential instrument for the rehearsing process. We will have a look at how to analyze the roles and again a reminder about all the steps in the rehearsing process. Before reading the text between the two characters, we will have some help to create more substance with the use of something that is called intuitive analysis. It provides another kind of information by the use of our senses, our hearing, our seeing, our feeling, our tasting and our smelling. It can make our intellectual mind rest a little for a while and it will open new perspectives. So this is an interesting tool when you feel that you have been stuck in the intellectual process of analyzing. You can ask yourself after reading through the text, what color do you see in the scene? What music do you hear? What other sounds do you hear? Is it some kind of material that you can feel? What speed or rhythm do you experience? And what temperature do you feel? What is the basic feeling? What shape do you feel? Is it solid? Is it liquid? Is it gas? Is it plasma? Is there any smell that you can imagine? Is there any taste that comes in your mouth? And to all these questions, you can have a follow-up question. If you notice some changes in colors, music, rhythm, tempo, etc. To do this in a group process is very interesting because you will have different kind of interesting answers because we have our own experience, our own imagination and we don't think as everybody else. So this is a way to open up the text again. You can summarize all responses and openly discuss the unexpected and expected suggestions. What do they tell about how we perceive the scene? And remember here, both to yourself and if you are working with a group of people, you remember there is no correct or right answers. So it's not what most people think that is the best. What is beyond the expectation, gives the the creativity some more power. It is a question that activates us, not the answers. Here is the text. And you might already see that I have started to divide it. I have put numbers of scenes and I have put 
kind of a mark on the right hand side. I will come back to that later. So I will let you read the text silently or you can read it out loud. The first time you meet a text it's important you read it in a neutral way like you are curious or you want to know what is this, what is the taste of the words. You can see that I have created three scenes. It is easy to forget that one scene is at the start when the sister Jada is alone. And you also easily forget about the scene that is after the last line. Even here you have to find some kind of actions. It's not the end when someone says the last sentence. Uh, we will not go deeper because we have done all this with all the, the, the two other texts. So I will I already decided that my theme is life lies and that we need them to survive. And the sign that indicates turning points in the script based on that statement. We need life lies to survive. So I will not show you how to work with all the previous steps 1 to 4 because we have already done those steps with Hotel California and the Monkey and the Turtles. So we are jumping directly to step 5, how to divide the text further. If you remember the, the four steps before that, it, it was about discussing who, when, where, you open up the text and then you start to close it again by deciding a theme and so on. And you create uh, action protocol, police protocol and a fable and your personal reading. So now my personal reading uh, is, uh, is um, we need life, life lies to survive. And the theme is life lies, of course. Life lies. So, step five, sequences. And we are now closing the text even more and deciding uh, every sequence in the text. So, a sequence is the distance between two turning points. If you remember, conflict, the change of direction is a turning point. So, where is a new initiative taken? Or where is the next chess move? You can talk about, if you know how to play chess, you also know what I mean. There is like my turn, your turn, my turn. Or the result, the outcome of each clash of will is a turning point. So mark the turning points in the script. Make the division so that at least one sequence is on one script page. 
that means at least one turning point per page. Now when you have done that, you have decided the turning points. You have to put a sequence, a headline on all the sequences. And it should be a sentence that concretely describes what it should contain. Normally, it describes the act of someone's will. For instance, Peter wants to seduce Eve. Eve wants to make him look stupid. There you have two examples of headlines and it's like what I said, a chess game. One is having uh, his will and then after that the other person, in this case Eve, wants to do something. So it's built on the will. The headlines together should have the support of the whole fable, the theme and the personal reading. If some of the sequences are outside of the whole concept, it should probably be deleted, the whole sequence. The headlines will now guide the work between the director and the actor. Those headlines are what we want the actors to show and express on stage. They have to decide how they will do it and why they will do it. But they have to find a way to express the will through actions. So this, the headlines are the agreement between the actor and the director. This is what we want to tell. It is now we can start to rehearse. I will now show you some examples of headlines from the story between Frederick and Jada. Jada wants to keep her mind and body positively busy. This is the first scene where she is alone and we are letting her enter to show this. So this is what we want her to express. Frederick enters and he wants to know his sister's state of mind. Jada wants him to stay. Frederick wants Jada to face the dead father. Just to explain this, you can express yourself in a very metaphorical way as long as it's understood by the actors. Now, five. Jada wants to show Frederick the father's big mistake. Frederick wants to point out the result of her and Axel's actions. Axel is, as you know, the husband of Jada. Jada wants to know about the father's last days in life. Frederick wants to have an honest answer from Jada. Frederick focuses Jada to face, forces Jada to face the truth. Jada loses her mask and express her will to die. Frederick wants to use the moment of naked truth and Jada reveals what she tried to hide. And finally, Frederick wants Jada to see the real mother. Jada put the mask back on. Sometimes you have to give both of them chess moves in the same kind of sequence. We will not go deeper into this, but this is this is a good guidance for the actors, what we expect them to express on stage. In the whole process, you can delete scenes or sequences that have neither the support of the fable or your reading. So you can move entire scenes or sequences is it, if it helps uh, the dramaturgy. So even the headlines can be moved in a way. And that means you move the sequences. Uh, just to think, remember to think about the dramaturgical model. You have a main turning point built up by many small turning points and sequences. So continue, delete and purifying. Now the actors work with the roles. So one part of the role analysis can be done by that director. Uh, because if you work with the whole plot, you will 
probably go into each characters as well. And another part can be done by the actors. And as I said before, you may have noticed that the how and the why will be answered with the actions of the actor. That's why it must be excluded from the main analysis and from also from the script. You don't want to block the actors from working as actors with creativity and inspiration. Now we can have a look at the text and the character. This is also work that can be done with the actors, uh, by the actors. What do the text say about the characters? That is the main question. So what do they say about each other and about themselves? What is the outcome of their actions? Now we look at the actions. What is happening? What happens? What do they state or claim? What do they say about the objects, people who are not present, about the relation to our theme? If you have a theme, for instance, life lies, what do they say about lying? And what do they say about life? So I will give you a few examples from this dialogue. It is probably rather exact from the text. Frederick says, I hurt Jada. About mom, he says, mom is curious. Mom can use the phone like no one. And Jada, she says, Frederick always voted with father. I always voted with mom. Axel cannot be away from mom. I want to die. Frederick always think badly of our mom. This is just some examples that you can extract from the text where you have a guide also who am I, what do I think about other people and what do I think about certain kind of circumstances. So this is in, uh, essential information to build the character from. As long as you remember that characters usually lies, because as an actor we are used to using subtext, so we say I love you and we think you are disgusting at the same time. And this kind of uh, duality will show on stage, I promise you. Just remember, the characters are not always telling the truth with the lines. They are usually hiding something that is hidden, just to protect their own objectives. This is also some question that you might ask yourself when you build up a character. Who am I? There you have some kind of background, you have some kind of essential life ideas. Where am I? So it's a big question. It's about where am I in life, but also where am I right now in this room, for instance. From where am I coming and where am I going? What do I want? Why do I want that? What time is it? It can relate to the time in life. It can relate to the, the seasons. It can relate to the exact hour. So what is my main goal and what obstacles are there? What are my short-term objectives? And what barriers or obstacles exist to stop me from achieving them? What are my skills to pass obstacles? This is an important question because if you forget about your skills or techniques or means to pass obstacles, the turning points will not be as strong as they should be. So think about giving yourself and the characters more skills to pass difficulties. 
So before we end, I would like to give you again the full picture of the process and how the analysis, the steps of the analyzing fits into that. Also remember that some part of the analysis can work as a base for improvisation. The whole fable can be improvised by actors, even without any script, even without them knowing about the script at all. They can improvise based on the fable. And the theme can be investigated also by improvisation. If you give them the theme, life lies, or love and jealousy, they will probably be able to improvise just to get the knowledge about the theme into their bodies and also to see what kind of experience do we have connected to the theme. So the whole staging process, we have the basic analysis, the study of the text, author, the era, the society, everything about the time when it was created. You have the play analysis. That's what we have been going through in these three episodes. We are working with theme, personal readings, role analysis, sequences, headlines, turning points, and so on. Now we can start with the scenery. We are improvising with uh, actors based on themes, sequences, situation, improvisation. Uh, just to mention the situation improvisation, you are moving the same kind of situation to something that the actors can relate to from their own life. There you create an improvisation. The text work is about to understand the lines and the main words, what to emphasize in the lines. It's rather important and it is definitely connected to the will of the characters. The extended work is to continue to work with the characterization, the intentions behind will, thoughts, uh, subtext, feelings, and so on. Partner contact, work with silent rehearsals just to make the actors really sensitize to each other. And you are using the spoken subtext, for instance, you are not silent in the subtext, you are talking about what you are thinking. Swap of roles can learn uh, can you can learn many things from that to add to your character and relationship improvisation that means you find a situation in the play that is not really in the play but it's mentioned in the play and it can be a very important event for the characters in the example of the pelican that we have been looking at there has been a funeral some days ago and that funeral could be interesting to improvise. It's not in the play. It's outside of the play. This will give the characters and the actors a physical memory of something they are relating to. to. It's a good idea to use this technique. It will be more real on stage when they are mentioning the death of the father. Something that many people start with because it seems to be the easiest is to start to think about light and sound and music and costumes and set design. Don't do that. Don't go into that too early because that will prevent you from continuing with the, the main work. The main work is what happens on stage between the, the actors and the characters. And finally, when you come just before you are opening up for an audience, you work with the rhythm and the tempo of the whole performance. So you create a flow that is uh, like a rhythmical experience for the audience. Just remember also that different characters, they have different tempo when they are entering, what they are doing and so on. So it's also a way to create rhythm and tempo. And then finally you have the meeting with the audience. You have maybe open rehearsals where you have the possibility to get some feedback from the audience. And then you continue with a very intensive week before you have the opening night. Yeah, that is the final part of this third episode and the first part of staging the text, how to analyze. The second part will be about the techniques used in uh, to investigate and rehearse. So here you will see actors in action 
with the director and how they approach how they approach the text after analyzing the text. So thank you for watching and I hope some of you will find this kind of work very inspiring and interesting. I will not call it theoretical, I will call it, this is like a method, this is methodology, how to analyze a text for staging it.